TII Item 125, March 28, 2010. Which mobile hotspot is the best for your iPad? Welcome to Today in iPhone. Yeah, I like it a lot. Today in iPhone. Hey, go Oh, yeah. My beautiful iPhone, which I never have out of my hand and that I do everything with and has become an extension of who I am. Today's episode is brought to you by the TII app, the official app for the Today in iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch podcast. Just search for TII in the App Store. It's just a buck ninety-nine. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Rob, and this is the Today in iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch podcast. And we're just less than a week away from the iPad being launched. I will be waiting online for my iPad on April 3rd, and I'd just like to say this to Steve. Could you put it a little later in the year where it's maybe, say, a tad bit warmer the next time you do one of these launches where we're going to have to go wait in line? Okay, granted, you don't really have to wait in line, but some of us want to wait in line. And that just goes to prove how crazy some of us Apple fanboys really are. Well, as always, I would love to get your feedback when you're waiting online, so give us a call when you're online, 206-666-6364, that's 206-MOON-DOG, or make a recording on your iPhone when you're online, and then email it to me at todayaniphone at gmail.com. As in the past with these launches, we will be playing your feedback from waiting in line in upcoming episodes. I am going to take Saturday and most of Sunday to play around with the iPad before I put up a show, so I will put up a show late Sunday night. There won't be one on Saturday, but it will be late Sunday night, so it will be about a day and a half after the iPad gets in my hands. That, of course, also means for those of you that do get an iPad, you have some time to call me and tell me what you think about the iPad, so we can mix that into the next episode as well. All right, let's get into the episode. First, I want to thank Jim for sending in the artwork for today's episode. He writes, Hi, Rob. There's not much to it, but I think it's visually appealing. Created with Doodle Buddy, a free app. Regards, Jim in Federal Way, Washington. Well, Jim, thank you for the artwork, and I did appreciate it and do like it. And folks, if you want to go ahead and download it, you can through the TIA app. Just go to the extras in episode 125. Okay, cue in creepy guy music and a two and a three. In this segment of How Wrong Were They? We have a longer quote, which goes, quote, The iPhone is certain to fade into history as another cool Apple innovation that others soon rush competitive-like products to market blowing away any significant need Apple might have. The iPod MP3 player is an industry Apple essentially created. The iPhone isn't. Too many major players are in the mobile phone market who have and will bring iPhone-like products to market over the coming months and years. LG has already done so with the LG Voyager phone, and now Microsoft's plans for Windows Mobile 7 OS have been leaked and described in considerable detail by insider Microsoft blogger Nathan Weinberg, unquote. Mitch Ashley, Network World, 11th of January 2008. Yes, January 2008. Wow is all we can say to this one. Well, I guess we can say a little bit more. It's one thing to be wrong before the fact, but after the fact? Oof. Now we're going to keep this music going just a little bit longer to talk about this next story. And that is thanks to Gavin and Tino for pointing out that there is an app for the Trollolo guy. Yes, this creepy guy in the video of this background music that you're hearing right now has an app. And it is $1.99. Just search Trollolo, T-R-O-L-O-L-O. This made it in the App Store on March 20th. For those wondering, I had no idea and have nothing to do with the creation of this app. This really is 100% a coincidence. So in the tradition of full and fair disclosure, I have nothing to disclose. Now sadly, when Gavin and Tino did contact me originally, the app was free, and I sent out a push message. Unfortunately, you probably didn't get many push messages this last week, and that was because we had an issue with push going out, and I didn't realize there was an issue with push, so messages I had sent out during the week, nobody got. And I want to thank a couple of people for saying, hey, I haven't gotten any messages this week. And I said, really? I just sent some. And and we tried some more, and on Friday, we finally got it working. So late Friday, you probably saw your first push message since Monday. Now, version 1.5.1, with the bug fix for the issue where push toggles on and off each time you open up the TI app, that has been submitted, as I mentioned before. We're still waiting for Apple to approve it. Apple, please approve the TII app version 1.5.1. It's just a bug fix. Thank you. Well, as I mentioned on the last episode, because of time constraints, I kind of cut out a lot of the listener feedback. So to make up for this one, we're going to kind of do a one-for-one here. 
as we do the news, first we'll play listener feedback, then we'll do news, then we'll go feedback, then news, and yada yada all the way through. So let's start with the first piece of feedback. Here we go. I just heard episode 123. Somebody asked a question about a Safari um, plugin for Flash. There is one. Go to Cydia, look for the source iMobile Cinemat. Then after that, go to your source and you go on the iMobile Cinemat, and there's a plugin there that you can play. Um, you can uh, install and you can play uh, Mo's video on Safari. This has been out since probably 2008, and I've been using it ever since. Anyway, great show. Have a nice day. Thanks for the feedback. And that was back for episode 123 when we were talking about plugins, if there was one out there for Cydia for Flash. And it sounds like there is. Speaking of past episodes, I guess my comments on episode 122 were taken out of context. And that was per my comments around the 40 minute, 50 second mark, where I said to the listener that was complaining about my voice or didn't like my voice, that he should go listen to App Slappy. I was not in any way saying Scott had a fake voice or anything like that. I was simply offering up another iPhone podcast for that person to go listen to. That was just the first one that happened to pop into my head, and that was probably because I had just added him to an Audible campaign. I've been working with Scott for the past year, almost two years, on Audible campaigns with my day job with Wizard Media. And I've talked with Scott, and we're cool, so I just want to let everyone know there was definitely no slam there intended at all in any way, shape, or form towards App Slappy or Scott Johnson. Okay, in the news, if you're getting an iPad and are a Lady Gaga fan, there are some cool iPad decals of Lady Gaga over at HardwareSphere.com. Expect many other cool ones to pop up in the next few weeks. I will have a link in the show notes if you would like to check that out. And if you, by the way, pimp out your iPad, uh, please send photos. Would love to see some photos of your pimped out iPads. Hi, Rob. This is Karen in Illinois. I called last fall regarding a calendar program, which I found that Calendoo is probably one of the best for my purposes. And I was wondering if anybody else has heard anything about Calendoo. It is the closest thing to Datebook 6, which is on the Palm operating system. So um, I was hoping that that company would be able to make one for the iPhone, but no such luck. At any rate, my second question is, I would like to know what size of memory does the iPad, will it be best to get? Will the programs and photos, etc., take up more memory than it would on an iPhone. I know that the I, it's running on an iPhone operating system, thanks to you. However, um, I'm also wondering, with the screen being larger, if that is going to make a difference in terms of the needs of the iPhone It's kind of or the iPad. It's hard to figure out what size to order or pre-order, and I was wondering if you had any comments or speculations about that. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Karen, thank you for the voicemail message. And per your question on the iPad and what size you should get, I went with a simple formula. I looked at my iPhone 3GS right now, and it's a 32 gig version, and I've got 20 gig of content on it right now. So I said, well, I better double that with the iPad because I'm gonna add more movies and whatnot. And that brought me to 40 gig, which meant I'm above the 32 gig, so I need to go to 64. So if you already have an iPhone or an iPod Touch, double what you're using on it currently and then go to the version that will handle that. That all said, I still personally just recommend you go to the largest version. Better to have too much memory than not enough and you can't expand the memory. And another reason to go with a larger one is you really just don't know what you're going to use the iPad for right now. And once you see that bigger screen, you're more than likely going to gravitate towards putting more videos on there. So you're going to need the more storage space. Oh, that was good grammar. Or how about you're going to need the larger unit or you're going to need more storage space. That would have been proper English. About a year ago, Apple offered up a contract-free version of the iPhone 3G, and now they are doing so again with the iPhone 3GS. Mind you, don't confuse contract-free with unlocked. So you're not... In order to keep this episode under 10 minutes, we're going to go ahead and end it there. If you want to actually hear the remainder of this episode, go to todayaniphone.com and look for the current episode. Or you can go to iTunes and subscribe to the Today and iPhone podcast. That way you'll be sure to get every new episode when it comes out in its entirety. 